Welcome to Cunningham Piano, I'm Hugh Sung, and welcome back to our ongoing tutorial series on the Yamaha CVP-809 Clavinova. This is Yamaha's most advanced digital piano, making it incredibly easy for one person to sound like an entire orchestra or an entire band. In today's episode, we're going to be playing Can't Help Falling In Love With You. If you've been following along in this series, you know I'm using the songs coming out of this wonderful book published by Hal Leonard called Best Songs Ever. Let me see if I can get a good view of this one. This is a wonderful publication, and this is specifically the seventh edition, and the Easy Play Today edition. What I love about this is the fact that these notes are big notes, really easy to read, and they even have the note names written inside of the notes, making it really easy to learn. All right. so. Without further ado, let's go ahead and dive into the sheet music for Can Help Falling in Love. All right, so let's take a look at this. Again, I'm going to speed through this just a little bit. I'm going to assume, instead of giving you a piano lesson, I'm going to assume that you'll be able to read these notes and learn this on your own. The first thing we're going to do is see if we can select the style that we're going to be working with. Let's look for the swing style. Okay, and to do that, we're going to go to our control panel and touch, touch on the left panel here to select a style. And I'm going to search for the word swing by tapping on the search icon over here. Go into this top bar over here, tap on swing. All right, OK. And I think the best option is going to be this 40s swing ballad over here, OK? So let's hear a little bit of what this sounds like. Uh, if you want to hear the, the full version, make sure you have the accompaniment on off selected, OK? And we're going to hit start, stop. Let's see what this sounds like. I, I love this style. This is great. OK, so I think this is a great style. Now, I want to use an interesting feature called chord looper. Essentially, this is where we're going to be recording all of the chord sequences first. OK? Now, this is great for a couple of reasons. For beginners, if you're not used to playing with both hands at the same time, you can actually just kind of pre-record the chord sequence and then just focus on playing the melody. For advanced players, you can actually take advantage of this to be able to improvise a lot more and have the harmony basically taken care of so you don't have to worry about playing the chords exactly to trigger the right harmony. I hope that makes sense. Let's kind of take, again, let's kind of stick, take a step back and let's take it from the perspective of a beginner that only wants to play one hand at a time. So the first thing I want to do is select a fingering style. We're going to do the single finger style for the chords. Okay? Again, you can do the single finger or any other combinations. If you've been watching the early, earlier tutorial, you know how to do this. We can either press and hold this middle keyboard to bring the split point or fingering options up, or another option is to hit the menu icon over here to bring up the full menu, and then you can find the split and fingering option up here. It's the same thing, all right? So again, if you're not here, if you're an absolute beginner, you can, might want to start with a single finger option for chords. The way this works is you use one finger for major chords, and you use two fingers for minor or seventh chords, okay? If you use a single finger, it'll play the major chord. For a minor chord, you're going to play the the, um, the chord name plus the black key, the closest black key to the left. If you're going to play a seventh chord, you play the chord key and then the closest white key to the left. So again, let's take a quick look and kind of review very quickly. The chords we're going to be playing are indicated by these symbols inside the boxes. Okay? And these are quite simply just the names of the notes that you're going to be playing. So for example, F major is just the F. A minor, we're going to use those two keys. Uh, with the A, you put your finger on A. In fact, let's go ahead and demonstrate some of this right now, okay? So let's go ahead and get the, the, the styles turned on over here. I'm going to hit an F over here. You can hear, hear an F major with single key fingers. Okay? Then hit A minor, we're going to play the A and the black key to the ne right next to that. Listen to this. Okay? Now if I want to hit a C7, I play a C over here and then the white key next to that. All right? Back to F major. Now, 
what Core Looper is going to let me do is put this whole, kind of record that whole chord sequence so I don't have to play my left hand while the song is going on. I can just focus on just playing the right hand. So let's take a look at how to do this. The Chord Looper option you'll find usually on the first option on the bottom panel, the bottom strip over here. Okay. If you don't see it there, click on the menu and you should be able to find it here. Here's a, here, for example, here's Chord Looper over here. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to hit, hit record and stop to record a sequence. Okay. Well, it might be helpful if you're just getting started here. It, sometimes it might be helpful just to get the metronome started so you can hear your beat. Now you'll notice okay, that the start stop button is flashing over here. That means it's, it's waiting for you to start playing. So watch what's going to happen. Okay, one, two, ready, and. Now D minor. Okay, B flat, I'm going to go over here. F major. Now I'm going to do a C7. Okay, B flat. C7. F major. G minor. C7. Okay, and then I'm going to hit the record stop. All right. And go ahead and hit the uh, stop button over here as well. We're done. Okay, great. So we've just recorded a sequence, and now we're going to save that to a memory slot. There are eight memory slots that we can save this to. Tap on memory over here, and then we're going to select one of these slots. Let's go ahead and select slot number one. If you can see this, it's a little bit small, but you can see the chords are actually written out. Not, not all of them are going to appear, but you can at least see the first oh, know, five or six chords that you've selected saved right here. Okay. Now, if you want to hear the sequence, tap on on off, okay, and that'll make this active. Now, when I hit the start stop button over here, Now you can hear the sequence just happening all on its own. Okay. So this is great. All right, let's go ahead and stop this again. Now what I can do is I can play the melody with my right hand. You notice that this is on and off. So if it's not lit up with orange, it's not going to, the sequence is not going to start. Go ahead and press this. Now it's primed and ready. Okay. So now let's go back, hit start stop. How cool is that? Okay. Now, if you, just noticing here, when I hit the start stop, it automatically shuts off the chord looper. Okay. So let's see what we can do to have this turn on automatically and maybe have a little bit of an introduction. Okay. So here's what's going to happen here. I've turned this on. Now, if you recall, we were working with registration memories. Oh, be before we do that, let's go ahead and save this sequence. Okay. And to do so, Look for the icon that has a little arrow pointing down to a hard drive. And go ahead and save it here, and we'll just kind of give it another name. We'll just say, can't help, okay? I'm going to press and hold the delete button just to erase everything. Okay, can't help. Uh, since I already did it once, I'm going to just call this number two, all right? There we go. So we've saved this over here. Now, one more thing what we're going to do is we're going to save this as a registration. If you recall, We've been using the registration memories to recall all sorts of settings over here. Everything that we've set up on the Clavinova at this point okay, is ready to go. We've got main variation A over here, for example. So I'm going to hit the memory button and save this to the registration bank number one. Okay? So now this is all set to go. Here we go. So now let's see if we can at least get started with the song over here. The first thing I'm going to do is I want to set an introduction. Okay. This is the simple this is the simplest intro and as you can go further they get more and more complicated but this first intro is very easy it gives us one measure of a countdown over here. All right. So now when I hit the start stop I'll have four beats to get started and then what I'm going to do is hit the registration to toggle that on. Okay. So here we go. Hit the start stop one, two, hit the registration memory and
Now this will just loop and repeat itself, the whole sequence, okay? So on and so forth, okay? So that's great, all right? So for people who are just learning to play and are having a hard time putting both hands together at the same time, this is, this is a terrific way of at least getting an understanding of how the chords work, having the chords play for you while you play your melody. Now, how about the advanced players? Well, the cool thing about doing this is that um, now I can be free to play a lot more, not have to worry about hitting chords with my left hand and the melody with my right hand. Now I can be a lot freer. So let's go ahead and demonstrate. Let's, there, of course, there's the next part to this song. So now let's kind of switch gears and go to the advanced mode, okay? So what I'm going to do now is go back to the screen. Let's go home over here. And now what I'd like to do is uh, change the fingering style, okay? So instead of single finger, just for fun, I'm going to show you how this all works. I'm going to go all the way over here and go AI full keyboard, okay? So now I also want to change the variation over here, all right? Just to hear that variation. Now let's go back into um, the chord uh, looper over here. We're going to record a new sequence. Let's actually go back to the music just for a second. Now, next part of the song, go over here. Now when I play these, I'm going to use a full fingered version to work out the harmony, okay? Instead of the single version. So the second part really only goes up to here, right? And then it's going to go back to the first chord sequence for starting over here, okay? So we're just going to focus on this, oops, sorry, this section over here, this kind of the middle verse over here, all right? So let's go ahead and go back into chord looper. Now we're going to record a new sequence, okay? It's ready to record, and again, I'm going to get my metronome going over here. Two, ready, and. stop over here. So I stop the recording. Now I want to set the memory for this sequence over here. And let's select memory bank number two. Okay. And let's hear what this sounds like. Again, I'm going to hit this, turn this on. All right. Um, and actually, I think we might have to save it again. Let's go ahead and save it again. Let's go ahead and save here. All right. Hit OK. Since I already wrote this in, let's, we're going to go ahead and say yes to overwrite this. So we can add that new sequence over here. Right, let's see what this sounds like over here. All right, the second sequence is selected. I use the more advanced kind of a harmony with the full fingers over here. So this is working great. So we're going to select our first chord sequence, make sure on and off is flashing like this. I'm also going to make sure my variation A is selected over here. Now we're going to save everything to registration bank number one. All right. Now, let's go ahead and do one more thing. Let's select the second chord sequence. All right. Let's select variation B over here. And now let's set this to memory bank two. All right. Now, let's hear what happens. And this time what I've done is I'm leaving the, I'm going to just leave it as the main, as a piano over here. And again, I've set my fingering to AI full keyboard. So now I don't have to worry about triggering the chords with my left hand. I can play as freely as I want, okay? And I'm going to have the whole sequence going between the two registrations, okay? So the first one we're going to select, make sure you have registration one selected in the beginning, all right? And we're going to actually also set up an intro just to give us a countdown. All right, all right, let's kind of see if I can get this to work. I'm going to go ahead and hit start, stop over here. Two, ready, and registration one. Now 
let's go into the second sequence. Back to sequence one. ending so on and so forth yeah so I hope you can see that the chord looper can be a really powerful tool for both beginners and for advanced players now if you I don't know if you noticed but if you're advanced you notice that I was actually kind of fooling around with my left hand and playing some slightly different harmonies blended with the harmonies I had pre-recorded that the chord looper gives me the freedom to play the song but not be bound by creating the chords with my left hand. And for folks who are just learning to play, having the chords pre-recorded means you can just play, focus on one hand at a time until you're ready to add both hands to the same time. It's, it's a really amazing tool. And again, in combination with using the registration memory, you can sequence a whole song. And if I wanted to, I could even set up an ending with another registration button, but so on and so forth. Pretty amazing. I hope you can see the power of the chord looper in a song like this. Anyway, I want to thank everybody that has been commenting and leaving questions and suggestions. I will be answering as many of the questions as I can in upcoming episodes of this tutorial series. If you enjoy this, be sure to subscribe so that we can let you, let you know whenever we have new content. For Cunningham Piano, I'm Hugh Sung. Thanks as always for watching, and I'll see you next time.